What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to have a little bit of a chat about that upcoming One Piece starter deck, the Navy starter deck. You see, a little while ago, I showed you that we were going to be getting it. And I showed you Sakazuki, the leader card. And I told you that at the point when I showed you that, the leader card didn't make a huge amount of sense. It didn't really work, honestly, because it was a card that relied on zero-cost characters, but, but there was no such thing as a zero-cost character. You know, go over to onepiece-cardgame.dev, which incidentally is where we're getting our translations from, and search for zero-cost characters, because actually onepiece-cardgame.dev is the best place to go and search for certain types of cards, and I mean that sincerely. There's nothing. If you search for zero-cost cards, you'll find all the leaders, because they technically don't have a cost, but there's no such thing as a zero-cost card. So we take a look at Sakazuki, and we've obviously got a 5,000 power, 5 life character, first black leader we've seen, incidentally, and it's got a skill, activate main once per turn, free cost. You can trash one card from your hand, so you pay free and trash a card, to KO up to one of your opponent's characters that costs zero. And it's really interesting, but it doesn't really seem to make a huge amount of sense. Because we've got a leader that deletes zero-cost characters in a game that, as it stands at the moment, doesn't have zero-cost characters. Which obviously doesn't make a huge amount of sense. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, because there is a very good reason for it. What we've got and this probably ain't going to surprise many of you, right? But what we've got are basically some cards, ready for it, that can reduce the amount or the cost of your opponent's characters. And that's where this gets spicy. So the most recent card shown off was actually Sengoku. We've got a 5 cost 6,000 power character, counter plus 1,000. Nothing terribly special there. But when attacking, you can give up to one of your opponent's characters minus four to their cost during this turn. Oh, well, that's kind of wonderful now, isn't it? And I love this. I adore this because it makes the deck work. Because like I've said, if all we're doing here is really just KOing characters that don't exist, obviously that's not going to work. You can't have a deck whose entire gimmick is KOing non-existent characters. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that that is, um... Well, it's not exactly a long-term plan. It's not going to work. But here, and here's the thing, it's an attacking skill, right? So it's an every turn kind of thing. Every turn you attack, and every turn you get to reduce the cost by four. And then while you're reducing the cost by four... You're hopefully bringing some characters down to being zero cost. And when you get them to zero cost, then you can come back in with your leader, Sakazuki, and pay free memory, trash a card from your hand, and just KO one of them. So this is beautiful. I love that we've got this skill. It's, it's pretty important for making the deck go round, honestly. But also, I love that it's an attacking skill on a 6,000 power character. So you're probably going to be able to stay around for five minutes and you're also going to be able to do this every turn, and that's kind of wonderful. But that's not all we've actually got here. Now, I usually do event cards at the end, but I, I do think we need to pop in here. Because we've got the event card, Great Eruption. It's a one-cost card that lets you draw a card, and then give up to one of their characters, minus two to their cost for the turn. So, I actually adore this. This is fantastic. Because on the one hand, yay, I am drawing a card, and that's quite good. I mean, I'm also playing a card, but you know, I'm cycling, that's fine. But then at the same time, I'm also being able to minus two to the cost of one of my opponent's characters. And like we've seen, this is hopefully going to put us in a really nice position where we can we'll make this work. We can actually start getting rid of, you know, the cost of our opponent's characters so that we can then go and, you know, KO them. 
And this is good. And I like this very, very much indeed. So yeah, I'm kind of in on this, honestly, ladies and gentlemen. This um, this makes me happy. This seems really good. And I like this. But, the, oh, as I should say, this is actually very different as a trigger. As a trigger, your opponent trashes a card from their hand. Not entirely sure why it's so different as a trigger, but it's fine. And I'm afraid I do have to jump in and just interrupt myself for a moment here. Because between making and posting this video, a new card actually went and got revealed. We have now seen Hina. And this skill is going to look a little bit familiar. Because what Hina does is on play, reduce the cost of one of your opponent's characters by four for the turn. It is actually exactly the same skill as Sengoku, although it is as a play skill rather than an attacking skill. So whereas with Sengoku, you can actually get this firing every turn if you just keep attacking. With Hina, you play, you get one use of it, and I should say free cost 5,000 power. So, fairly standard. And to be honest, free cost 5,000 power is what we would expect from a vanilla character. So instead of having counter plus 1,000, you've got this skill that can lower your opponent's character's cost. But then again, as we've been talking about, in this particular deck, that's a very, very good skill to have. But then what we've got here are some other characters. Now, Kobe... I like very much indeed. Kobe is a one cost 2000 power character counter plus 1000. But what we see here is on play, you can trash a card from your hand and KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of zero. Now that's kind of similar to what we see on the leader Sakazuki here. But the difference is you're playing a character and trashing a card from your hand. So rather than paying free and trashing a card from your hand, you're paying one and trashing a card from your hand, but you're also getting a 2,000 power character onto the field, which I do think makes a huge difference. I like this. Plus, let's not forget that Sakazuki is limited to once during your turn. So you've then got, you know, play Kobe, use Sakazuki. And sure, in total, you're paying four and trashing two cards from your hand. You don't have infinite resources, but you are still getting rid of potentially two characters here. And that's kind of awesome. Now, we've also got Smoker, and I like Smoker. Incidentally, this is one of the designated super rares from the deck. Remember, there tend to be two super rares per starter deck, and they've got the foiling and all of that, and they are, well, there's a bunch of cards in there other than the super rares that you only get two of, but these you can feel very confident will only get two of. We have seen the other super rare, incidentally, we'll finish with that in a moment. But Smoker is a five cost, 7,000 power character, and it cannot be KO'd by card effects. Very, very, very important, because there are a bunch of effects that want to do that. But Don X1, attach one Don. As long as there is a character that costs zero in play, this character gains double attack. That is to say, you deal two damage rather than one if you get an attack through the leader. This is great. This is absolutely phenomenal. Because again, the whole point of this deck seems to be lower your opponent's cost to zero and then take advantage of it. So we've got a 5 cost character with 7,000 power, which is fine. And remember at this stage, all the leaders we've seen have 5,000 power. And the tie, you know, if there's a power tie, it goes to the attacker. So 7,000 power is going to get through fairly often unless your opponent really starts comboing. And now you, you get double attack as long as you attach one Don. And there's a single character that costs zero in play, which should be the case because that's the goal of the deck. I am interested to see exactly how much of this deck really can lower your opponent's cost to zero. And I am going to be very interested to see if we get more of those kind of cards moving forward. I am skeptical as to whether the deck, as it comes out of the box, is going to be good enough. But it's going to be interesting to see if we get more of this in the future. As it's the first black cards we've seen, it's hard to really predict. But I think we probably will. And I think that's going to be very, very interesting as time goes by. Now, I did say there's one more super round we would finish off. We've got Monkey D Garp, 5 cost, 6,000 power. And activate main, discard one card, and rest this card. K 
KO up to one of your opponent's four cost or lower characters. So essentially, you discard a card from your hand, and there's a lot of that in this deck, so you're going to need some draw power. And you need to rest this card so you give up the attack. But you KO up to one of your opponent's four cost or lower characters. But here's where it gets interesting. Because let's say you attack with Sengoku and play Great Eruption. Well, the combination of those two cards can lower one of your opponent's characters by six cost during this turn. So now, Monkey D. Cop isn't actually KOing a four cost or lower character. You are in essence KOing a 10 cost or lower character, which is huge in One Piece. Bearing in mind, in order to pay, you have to rest Don. And you're only allowed to have 10 Don. So it's kind of hard to have a more than 10 cost character. Because you literally, and I mean very literally, cannot pay more than 10 cost. It's not physically possible. And in fact, all we've seen so far is the Kaido from OP1 in terms of having a character with a 10 cost. At least according to One Piece Dash Card Game Dev, and they kind of know what they're doing. So my point here very simply is that this is phenomenal. And if you can get this to work, and as I've said, that is a very big if at the moment. But if you can get this to work, this could be really, really fun. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This deck is starting to look a lot more interesting as time goes by. And I am rather excited. And I didn't mention it earlier, so let me mention it now. Hey, we finally got a proper look at the deck box. The packaging, which is lovely. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this. I want to know if you think this deck is shaping up nicely. I want to know whatever you want to tell me. So let me know in the comment section, would you get us? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.